What's going on YouTube? In this video I want to do a complete crash course for DaVinci Resolve 16. I'm going to explain you everything you need to know to get started working in this program today. Okay, so first thing first, we have basically the Venture Resolve 16. This is the first screen you're going to see. To open up new project, click to Untitled Project right over here. And this is going to be your default loading screen. So let's go to the media. And over here on the left-hand side, basically, this is where you see all your hard drives connected to your computer. To add your own hard drive, right-click, click on the Add New Location, and basically specify a folder or another hard drive to add for your work. Okay, I'm not going to do that since I already have a bunch of stuff over here. Now, let's really quick talk about workspace. If you don't want to have a certain page to be displayed at the bottom, like in my case, I never work with a cut page, so I have this unchecked. I also never work with a Fusion, so as you can see, I have this unchecked also. If you want to have default or if you want to hide some pages, it is workspace, show page, and basically click the check mark, whatever you want to show or not. Now, let's start moving. So I have tutorial folder. This is my footage. And I'm going to show you a couple really cool things. To add clip to your basically media pool, all you'd have to do, select clip and drag this over here in the medium pool. This is my clip. Basically, this is one of my clips. If I want to add multiple clips, you select as many as you like and drag them down. Now, here's a very cool trick. If you have a long edit and you want DaVinci Resolve to automatically cut it for you, here's a trick. I have over here a Game of Thrones little uh, compilation from YouTube. Basically, I downloaded for my tutorial to show you guys. Now, let's say I want to have this cut for me. As you can see, it's a single file. So all you have to do, right click and select scene cut detection. Okay, you're going to have a pop up screen over here and basically click auto detect. And it's going to start going through screens through different basically cuts. And you can see it's detecting cuts automatically. Now, I'm not going to obviously go through the whole process, so let's stop this, and we have all our clips over here. Sometimes it does really good job, sometimes you kind of manually have to adjust it. With this pink little or purple little bar, you can basically finesse the amount of clips. Like over here, now I have 78. If I'm going to bring it down, I'm going to have 405. Whatever there is a soft gradient, DaVinci Resolve doesn't understand, so it's going to do like multiple cuts. So in my case, I'm just going to do the smallest one, and I'm going to select Add Cuts to Media Pool. Okay? I'm going to close this, and now I have all those cuts that have been added to Media Pool. So as a general, that's all you need to know about Media Page to get started. So let's go to the Edit page. In the Edit page, in order to get started, it's very simple. You go to the file, new timeline, okay, and you have a couple choices. You can do empty timeline or you can have the timeline checked, okay? If you have timeline checked over here, empty timeline, basically it's going to do empty timeline. However, if you're going to do a new timeline and have this unchecked, it's going to automatically add all your files from the media pool into the timeline, okay? just like this it's basically added all my files that i have selected okay right over here and then we have a little raw files the one i added to show you so basically this is how it works very simple very straightforward now audio all you need to know about audio if you right click you can add new track mono stereo 7.1 and so on or if you're working with mono or you want your video to be mono, you can change track type to mono stereo. So right click, change track type, and you can select that. 
Now, edit page is very simple. Let me zoom in. You have plus and minus. That basically zooms into timeline. Zoom in, zoom out. Couple things you need to know, really. This is the blade. You slice it with it. Okay. Very simple. And then you have arrow. With the arrow, you basically select what you don't need. Now, here's cool things. You can delete clip and have empty space instead of that clip, or you can delete and move entire timeline. Now, if I'm gonna push backspace, I basically deleted everything and there is nothing else. If I push Control Z and bring that clip back, if I'm gonna select it again and push delete, we can see that it removes the clip and basically brings everything to that clip. Very simple. Now, by default, let me cut another little chunk. Now, by default, your clip gonna be ganked. The audio gonna be ganked to the to the video. If you wanna uncheck that, at the very bottom, right click, you have link clips. If you unlink that, now you have two separate, basically, clips. So let's say I don't want audio. I just do it like that. And I have my clip now without audio. Now, on the right-hand side over here, you have a basic stuff, like a composite. You have different blending. If you know Photoshop or not, this is the blendings. I can zoom in. Let me do a little brighter piece. You can zoom in over here, the position, angle, and basically so on. This is very standard editing effects. Okay. Now, over here on the side, you have a little mixer. Basically, that mixer shows you... Um, your audio levels very simple very straightforward this little audio over here does not represent actual video loudness okay this is your system you can have it all the way down and basically the actual loudness still gonna exist so keep that in mind I know a lot of people make that mistake so this is just how loud you hear it through your own speakers it does not affect loudness of the file Okay, so let me do another little piece over here. Now, speaking of the loudness, if you have a certain regulations uh, in your country or you want your clip to be certain loudness, it's very simple. Okay, let's say you're doing a YouTube video and you have little different cuts and you kind of want to bring them together. Right click and you're going to see normalize audio levels. Click on that. Okay, let me... Can I move it? Oh, I guess I can't. Uh, and basically select whatever standards you're looking for. Like, for example, in United States, anywhere between those three, let's do number four. Okay. I'm going to click normalize, and we can see that it normalized audio. Okay. If you have multiple clips, select like that. Again, right click, normalize audio level, and you have relative and independent. Relative, it's going to look at all those clips and it's going to figure out the medium one. And independent, it's going to take each clip and it's going to adjust each clip to a specific loudness. Like, for example, again, let's do like that. Okay. It's going to take a second and it's basically going to normalize everything. Very simple. Okay. Very straightforward. All right. So that's about it with the edit page. Easy, nothing really complex over here. Color page. Color page, obviously a little bit more complex. I'm not going to be going through color grading tutorial, obviously. I have 100 other videos on my channel, so be sure to check them out. In color grading, all you have to do, or all you have to know, I should say, this is your color wheels right over here. Lift, shadows, gamma, midtones, gain, highlights, offset, basically. Offsets, let me do workspace scopes okay let me show you okay so this is your scopes and by the way you go to the workspace video scopes on okay so if you do offset basically this is how you offset everything if you do highlights only affect the highest part shadows shadows and so on log what is log Log is the very same thing, just a little bit more finesse. Like, for example, see how shadows over here affect only more bottom part of it? If you want to increase the range, 
just dial it over here low range same goes with the high range let me do something crazy and we can see on the scope this is how it's affecting very simple very straightforward over here you have your custom curves okay let me uh, erase everything so here we have custom curves you have hue versus hue hue versus saturation and so on again i'm not going to go too deep into this this is crash course just showing you basically where everything is located all right so this one is your camera raw section like if i'm going to select raw clip okay clip this is where you select your color space um gamma and so on basically white balance whatever your raw format allows you now this clip over here is motion effects basically it's a noise reduction okay you can select it over here faster better obviously better takes more computer resources faster a little bit less however if you do obviously work should always check better it's going to take a little bit longer but you'll get better results so this is very straightforward then you have rgb mixer over here for example we can turn monochrome and we can see how rgb mixer affecting all that again depending on what you do color grading this is going to be your option all right so that's really straightforward this one you have your selection over here let me again erase everything so this is your selection you can select certain part of the skin okay again not color grading tutorial just a quick overview let's say you want to increase saturation okay just like that and before and after we can see this your little highlight tool basically whatever select if you have highlight selected it will show you uh, whatever you're selecting for example like that and basically we can see if I increase saturation that this is what we're affecting uh, very straightforward this is your scopes you have RGB parade you have waveform you have vector scope you have histogram basically your standard set for basically color work and video editing now let's talk about a little bit of performance if you have complex effect going on or you color grading you can basically cache your clip go to the playback render cache and I suggest if you have spare hard drive just for cache select smart and basically it will start caching in the background I have dedicated video about how to speed up your performance make sure to check it out I'm gonna put a link in the cards above I dedicated entire video basically to this process but in general if your if your computer is not too powerful caching will help you out and make performance a little bit better okay so that's about it with the color it's very simple uh, next page we have Fairlight. Fairlight basically is your audio editing page over here. Let me go to the edit really quick. Let's see. Okay, let's go here and go to the Fairlight. All right, we can see our waveform and screen on the side. If we want to make screen bigger or drag it to second screen, we can do that by clicking over here. Little window okay so I can drag it to a second screen or for sake of tutorial I can leave it here okay and this is where you primarily edit your audio um, again I'm not gonna go too deep into this because it's gonna take hours and hours and hours but in general this is where you do your ADR this is where you do effects you have a bunch of pretty much unlimited amount of power you can do over here so this is more for professional users who, you know, know what they're doing with the audio and stuff like that. So now finally deliver page. Deliver page is very simple. You can do a few things here. First of all, your file name, very straightforward. Let's do render clip. And your location, let's do desktop, click save. So the file that I'm going to be rendering gonna go into desktop now format uh, selection is unlimited if you do something for let's say YouTube you have good h265 over here and your resolution very important make sure your rendering 
resolution is matching your timeline. If you're, if let's say you're working with 4K footage and your timeline set to 1080p and now you want to do render 4K, make sure you actually change it in project settings because if you're going to have 4K footage in 1080p timeline and you're going to set rendering 4K in a delivery page, basically what it's going to do is going to take your 1080p timeline and it's going to upscale to 4K. So you're going to lose tons of resolution like that. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're rendering. But here for the sake of the video, 1080p obviously, 24 frames, um, quality, you can do your manual quality. For YouTube, I recommend something like between 7,000 to 10,000 kilobits, no more. Uh, over here, you can do constant quality, basically variable quality, typical stuff you find in any program. Now, if you right click, you can select mark in and then let's say mark out. And basically this is gonna be your little frame between the, the timeline if you wanna render a certain part. If you only wanna render one clip, right click, render this clip right over here. And it's gonna only render one clip. Or you can right click over here, entire timeline. Basically all clips gonna be rendered and this is how you deliver. Very simple, very straightforward. Uh, technically, you don't need to know more about this. It's not a rocket science. It's very simple, just like you would find in any other program. So this is very simple crash course. Basically, everything I showed you will get you started straight up editing. If you guys want to find out more about color section, check out my other 140 videos. I have tons of videos on color grading in depth talking about this kind of stuff so thanks for watching if you like this video click the like button make sure to subscribe and i will see you guys soon